January 24th came and went without any issues. USS Gudgeon had to submerge multiple times to avoid air patrols, but no further contact was made with any surface ships. The 24th would be our last day patrolling the waters off the Bungo Straits. We have received new orders from Subpack. Gudgeon was to proceed to the East China Sea and conduct a patrol off the Ryukyu Islands. With a grand total of eight torpedoes remaining, the boat commenced her trek west to new and dangerous waters. January 27, 1943, 1348. Gudgeon has made it to our new patrol area, and it seems the Japanese pilots don't waste any time. Multiple aircraft were picked up to the north by air search radar. Thankfully, the boat was able to submerge rapidly and avoid detection. Gudgeon will spend the remainder of the day submerged. Surface radar contact bearing 019 degrees, range 7 miles. The target is on a northwestern heading of 067 degrees. Gudgeon will intercept and investigate the lone contact. Hello everybody, Wolf back here, and welcome back aboard the bridge of USS Gudgeon. We are currently pursuing a lone freighter by the looks of things. It was heading right our way. But as we can see now, it seems to be changing course quite drastically, I might add. It is a lone freighter. We have no other contacts on radar. Therefore, I am really considering the idea of utilizing our deck gun for this engagement. We have 115 rounds of armor piercing ammunition. That is all we have left in the deck gun. So, um, I really don't want to waste a torpedo because we only have eight of those left and I'd rather save them for something a little bit bigger. Looks like the target is turning north though. Let's go ahead and begin plotting uh, to see where she is going. Let's bring up our stopwatch and start timing. I can't tell if the freighter here is armed. It kind of looks like it has razzle dazzle camouflage and well we all know how I feel about that so. Uh, we are definitely going to sink it. It is very possible it has some small caliber, maybe 25 millimeter anti-aircraft guns on the deck. Um, it's going to be pretty hard to pick out, but uh, I'm not sure. There are some structures. They could either be guns or they could be funnels. I do not know yet. Let's check the crew here. Okay, everyone's hunky-dory. Let's man battle stations, please. And can I get a range estimate? Range 24 thousand feet. No, 18,000 feet now. Okay. We could engage now. It is pretty far. I'd rather get within, say, 5,000 yards. Hmm. Yeah, let's get a little bit closer. Let's increase speed to full. We are going to use the deck gun. I have made that decision now. I'm not going to waste a torpedo on a lone freighter. I'm kind of hoping we encounter a convoy. This is our new patrol area, by the way, which we were assigned. Um, pretty close to where we were patrolling previously. The waters up here were extremely lucrative. As you can see, it is pretty crazy how many ships we were able to sink in just five days in Area 7. But we'll see uh, how things are here. We have been here a full day, and this is the first surface ship we have detected. Yeah, this this vessel is making a pretty hard turn. It looks like she is continuing her turn, probably just turning due north. Um, probably heading up towards Kyushu. That would be my best guess. Okay, folks, we are within range now. We are swinging the boat slightly to port to bring our rear mount to bear on the freighter. The deck gun crew should engage. Let's go ahead and rudder, rudder amidships now. There we go, heading like 240-ish. Okay, first round is away. It looks like it is going to go forward of the target. However, range looks rather good. I'm going to order the crew to aim for waterline. Try to induce some flooding here. Uh, to get this large freighter to uh, go under relatively quickly. 
I'm looking at it, and it looks like these um, things I saw on the bow and the stern of the ship were in fact funnels. Uh, it does not look like she is armed, so we could close in a bit more. Uh, we're not 100% sure if she is unarmed at this point, so uh, we do want to play it relatively safe. I don't want our boat getting shot up. Um, we have been playing it a little risky, this patrol, so now that it's coming to an end, I'd like to be a little cautious, I suppose. Okay, I'm waiting for my crew to finally get a good hit. They keep overshooting the target, which is kind of surprising. Um, who do I have on there? Yeah, okay. I have the crew I wanted on there on there, so we may have to hold fire and close a little bit more. All right, that'll be our... Well, there we go. There's a hit. All right. I, I should have never... Should never have misjudged them. I should have known. Now they're... That's another hit. Now they're going to get consistent hits. They got her locked in. There was just a catastrophic explosion aboard the freighter. Does not look like they are having a good time now. Uh, I think it's only a matter of time before this freighter goes down. The crew is getting relatively consistent hits on the target. Well, there we have it, folks. The enemy freighter is going down. It did take quite a bit of deck gun ammunition. However, USS Gudgeon was unharmed during the attack, which is what really matters. Uh, it looks like the ship is taking on water relatively quickly and starting to sink. And with that, USS Gudgeon has sunk her first enemy vessel in her new patrol area. We are going to continue on our course and see what else we can find. Let's see where we are patrolling. We just have a pretty standard patrol area up here. and We'll see if we can pick anything up. I will submerge frequently uh, to check hydrophones. And other than that, it's really business as usual. I don't expect this area to be as hot as Area 7. However, I do suspect, I mean, enemy activity will be high. I just don't think it'll be as high as near the Bungo Straits, that's for sure. We shall see, though. The sun had not been up for long before air search radar picked up enemy air contacts. It looks like there will be a high probability of Gudgeon staying submerged for the day. Air activity here is very high, it would seem. At 1500 hours, Gudgeon popped up to radar depth to check the skies and ensure the coast was clear. There was a surprise in store for us, however. Surface search radar reports three contacts moving very quickly. These three contacts are closing in on our position. A few minutes later, sonar confirmed the three contacts. It seems to be one warship and two freighters. Our lucky day. With the current course of the enemy ships, interception will be trivial. Okay, folks, we are popping our periscope up to take a look at the ships we have been tracking for the past 30 or so minutes. And right off the bat, we have a destroyer. Very cool. Uh, it looks like a fairly competent destroyer. Two stacker. Looks like torpedo launchers. Uh, not the rinky dink destroyer escorts we are kind of accustomed to, honestly. And then off to the right, it looks like we have two fairly large freighters. These. This two-stacker is um, drawing my eye, that's for sure. 
Uh, it may be quite difficult to actually identify the target at this angle. Uh, let's let's open this up though and take a look. Two stack freighter. It looks like the stacks are pretty close together though. Let's see. Horai Maru. I probably just butchered that, but uh, what's new? Um, it looks like it does have this little structure uh, forward of the two funnels. And let's see if the mass check out. Yeah, and that is her. Okay, 9,192 tons. Top speed is 17 knots. The draft is 28 feet. It is a troop transport. That is going to be our primary target, that's for sure. Honestly, this attack is going to be difficult for quite a few reasons. Uh, the first and obvious one is the destroyer here. <laughs> um, that is a, a very intimidating warship um, that will complicate things. Secondly, it's broad daylight in extremely calm seas. Like, the seas are extremely flat. And that means, well, our periscope can easily be spotted, but additionally, the wakes of our torpedoes are going to be very, very visible in these sea conditions. So we want to get pretty close to do it. And honestly, I may even use um, the high speed setting for our Mark 14s, even though that's not advisable. Uh, it does increase the chance of duds. I did track their speed on radar, and they were going 16 knots, so they are moving extremely quickly. I do want to double check that, though, as they get a bit closer. And what is that destroyer doing? Looks like the destroyer is conducting some sort of ASW search off out there. Hopefully it just uh, keeps meandering out into La La Land, and we don't really have to worry about it. That would be certainly ideal. And uh, due to just the conditions here... I think I will be singly engaging this ship. I don't think we will try to engage both ships. Uh, just the evasive maneuvers, I'm sure, are going to make it extremely difficult to engage both um, in these conditions. Let's see here, though. Katurin Maru, I think this is actually it here. Single stacker, 6,000 tons. Okay. Yeah, mark that in. I think we've actually sunk one of these before. Okay, well, we have quite a while before these ships get nice and close. Let's see how far out they are from us currently. Mark. Uh, 7,912 yards away. So, yeah, we still have quite a while. Let's drop our scope. Um, I'm thinking I'll launch either two or three torpedoes. I'll, use a, I'll do a spread as well just to ensure we actually get at least one hit. Um, my worry with the ships going this fast is the evasive maneuvers are going to uh, certainly uh, be quite aggressive. Okay, time to take another look at our friends, and now it's really time to start gathering information for the torpedo attack. The destroyer is on the starboard side of the convoy, thankfully. Uh, hopefully it is really no factor and doesn't pick us up. We are crawling at a speed of one knot, and as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and rig for silent running. Look at the bow wig on this guy. They are just flying. Okay, lock on target. I think that... Yeah, let's see. Let's uh, get range here. See how far away they are currently. Mark. Okay, 3,700 yards. We are around 2,000 yards away from their track, so we will be nice and close for the actual engagement. Let's see what they think they're going. Uh, the crew reports the ship is going 18 knots. Of course, we know that is inaccurate because the top speed is 17. But that's okay. Angle on bow. 40 degrees port for the time being, Mark. Set that, turn on the position keeper, and I'm going to just plug in 16 knots. And get it nice and aligned there, Mark. And get range one more time. There we go, 3,000 yards, rapidly closing. Even though we are just crawling, let's see our destroyer friend. It's just hanging out there. Jeez, it is just crazy how fast they are moving. This may be, I wonder, is this the fastest uh, fastest convoy we have encountered uh, this series? I think it very well might be. All right, well, we are going to drop our scope, of course, because, um, uh, you know, don't wanna, don't wanna get that thing spotted. We are extremely close at this point. 
Um, we're going to be very close for the attack too, which probably works out. Um, I am going to shoot high speed torpedoes. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and get those set up. We'll shoot tubes one, two, and three. High speed contact. Um, not something I really want to do using the high speed uh, setting because that does increase our chance of duds. But it gives the enemy less time to react. I'm very nervous about the just the sea conditions. It's so calm. And these guys are moving so quickly. Okay. Up scope. Let's get another another range check. And the destroyer is behind this target now. I hope it's not shifting to the port side of the convoy. That would be less than ideal. 2,400 yards out. What do you guys think? 16 knots. That's what they're showing. Fantastic. Okay. Angle on bow. Let's adjust that a bit. 65 degrees port. Mark. Down scope, open tubes, one, two, and three. Okay, the destroyer is coming our way. We're gonna have to make this quick. Evasion is going to be very interesting now. All right, lock, 2,000 yards out. Do I wanna start? Oh gosh, I am not a fan of that. Okay, folks, it is time to fire. We are firing now. That destroyer is kind of bearing down on us. Tube two. We will have a offset to the right. One degree. Tube two, fire. Tube three, just a slight offset to the left. Very minimal. Tube three, fire. Down scope. Drop the boat down to 150 feet and swing around. Let's get the hell out of here. That is three torpedo impacts and we are now being pinged. We are dropping down to 150 feet now. As a matter of fact, let's get even lower. 200 feet, all ahead full. We gotta move, we gotta move. This isn't good. All right, down to 250. Get the hell out of here. Okay, the boat is now below the thermal layer. They're about to roll. The shore is going right over the top. Right full rudder. Here we go. Hold on. 